What's up, good people? Tiana Cherie here, and today we are doing a Get Ready With God. Yes, Get Ready With God. So this is Get Ready With God number three. She on a row. She's on a row, okay? So first of all, let's get into this fit. I got on a regular, degular, everyday fit, okay? This is a sun and light. Today is actually a holiday, but she's still going to the office because faith and hustle is what she does, okay? So um, I'm headed to the office wearing something light, and I'm just going to tell y'all what I got going on right now. So first of all, I'm still, even on a wearing something light day, I'm wearing a bunch of jewelry because that's what I do. So I have on a herringbone necklace. Mm-hmm. Got this from a jeweler on Etsy, so I'll put that in the description box. I'm constantly shopping on Etsy. I'm here for the small business, so yes, that's what I have on, some chain link, chain link earrings. You can get these from Etsy too, but I actually got these from Macy's for the low Lizzy, so Macy's uh, got me together on the earrings, and then I have on the rings that I always wear, the stacked white sapphire and i also have on this set white sapphire as well yes i love why is this not focusing i love white sapphire right now like it's my jam so that's the jewelry we got into that i have on a hoodie faith and hustle this is from a black owned company on etsy i have about six of their hoodies all of them say something uh, related to faith and so I really 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 love the company definitely dope I'm gonna put them in the description box below I'm upping my black owned apparel this year okay this year I want to have black owned companies in my closet okay and then I have on these jeans these are I believe is it Massimo Target <laughs> I think that's what it is. She gonna put the right information in the description box. But I have these on. They fit real snug like. You know what I'm saying? And she likes. So these are size 12. The hoodie is a size large. I really think that um, some of their hoodies in size large came a little bit too big. Though I'm not gonna lie. So I'm not sure what to tell you. If you wanted to shop with the company, I would say you can see me. I'm 5'3". Uh, she ain't finna put her weight on here. But... Um, you kind of can see my body makeup. So that's what it is. Um, and then for shoes, I don't have my shoes on. I'm in my bathroom, y'all, today instead of my garage because I didn't put my heat on in the garage. So she in her bathroom. So y'all can't see my shoes. These are what I will be rocking with the fit for today. Okay. That's finna be fire. Yes. Um, Nike Vapor Max Flyknit. That's what these are in all black. Let's get into them. I'm liking kicks these days. People who know me don't know me for wearing kicks. Uh, I started wearing gym shoes probably just a year or two ago, but they get me together on a day like today. Let's get into my purse. All right. I love this purse. I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of where I got this purse. Deets will be in the description box below. But this purse, this fit, these shoes. I'm just saying, even for a chill day, she looking good. She looks good, okay? Yes. This is the fit for today. Let's get into the word of God. That's what we're here for. So, oh, let me show you my face. Okay, she feeling good. Let's get into the word. Here's what I want to talk about. This morning during prayer, I um, heard the Lord say to me something that perplexed me, and I want to talk about it here. What the Lord said was, I am patiently awaiting your participation. And the reason that that was perplexing to me is because I was like, hold on, God. I've been participating. I've been participating. So I'm confused. 
about why you're patiently awaiting my participation. God went on to say, I am here. Where are you? And again, I was perplexed. Like, wait a minute. I'm here too. Like, we here together. But I'm patiently awaiting your participation and I am here. Where are you? Was what was on my heart this morning. And I thought about this for a while. And I started studying the Bible, the word of God. And I started seeing in Psalm 63, where God wanted to take me with this word that he had for me. In Psalm 63, David is in a state of wilderness, okay? And he's writing the Psalm talking about how he's seeking earnestly God. He's pursuing God in an earnest way. He's chasing after God. This is what Psalm 63 is talking about, okay? And I've said before on this channel that we have to be intentional about our pursuit of God. But speaking that is not the same as living that. And so while I may say it and while I may have said it, maybe I wasn't putting it into action the way that God wanted me to put it into action. So I needed to go back and listen to my own videos and execute the things that I was saying to y'all. Because God was saying to me this morning, he's patiently awaiting my participation and he's there looking for me. And so that means that it's not enough for me to talk it. It's not enough for me to look the part. It's not enough for me to read the word every now and again, pray at nighttime, uh, get, maybe listen to a, a message or two and then go to church virtually on Sundays. Like that doesn't cut it. That'll get you so far but it doesn't cut it. That's not going to give us that abundant life that God wants to give us because see, he's waiting for us to do something. And the question is, what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be pursuing him earnestly. We're supposed to be chasing after him. And when we are in a place where we're like, you know what? I love God. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But we are still actually in a state of wilderness. Then what we're saying isn't matching up with our current state. And that means that we have to alter and tweak some things because we could say the right things, but God is still sitting back like that ain't it. That's not it. And so what I want to say to you today and what I want to say to me today is that in addition to doing the things that God has called us to do and in addition to speaking uh, godly things and having God on our hearts and on our minds and including him in our day, in addition to that, we have to pursue him in a more impactful way. One of the things that stood out to me about the way that David framed his discussion with the Lord is he, David said, I am seeking earnestly you, you God, you, the God, I'm seeking you. David didn't say, I'm seeking your, your blessings for my life. I'm seeking your, um, touching my body to heal me. I'm seeking your blessing, my children. I'm seeking your opening my womb. I'm seeking your bringing my husband to me. David didn't say anything about what he wanted, what he needed as far as like these earthly worldly things. David said, I'm seeking you, the God, God. That's who I'm seeking. That's what I want. Not the things that you can provide me when you show up. No, you. And I think that's where I missed the mark or where I think many of us, if we're honest, might miss the mark because we'll be pursuing God, seeking God. And we're like, all right, why well, ain't been blessed? And it's like, well, hold up. What was you seeking God for? A blessing or God? That's the question. And so when he says, I'm patiently awaiting your participation, God wants us to show up and show out in our pursuit of him, just him, just him, nothing else. 
Will other things come? In due time, in his time, those things are going to come. But if our heart, if our motive, if our intent in our prayer is to get what God has for us and not to get God, he going to be waiting on us. He going to be waiting on your participation and you going to be thinking you a participant, but you're not. And so I, I'm just talking, y'all, and I hope that this resonates with you. I think I'm moving my hand a lot too, so my bad, but... I'm excited because I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit put this on my heart because I don't want to just think I'm a participant. I don't want to just think I'm doing what he wants me to do. I don't want to just think what I'm doing is enough. I want to know that I need to do something else because that's the only way I'm going to get to the life that he really has for me. Do I want the husband? Do I want the kids? Do I want the, the, the business to blow up? Do I want all of these things? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right? But I got to want God more than those things. All right. Listen, <laughs> she was honest. <laughs> she was honest. And so, um, I want y'all to be honest too. Figure out where you are. Figure out if you've been pursuing God or if you've been pursuing what God can do for you. Because we need to be like David in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. This is this is the truth of it. Being in the wilderness, I've been there. Okay, I've been there. The being in the wilderness in a in a figurative way is like being lonely. It's like wanting and yearning for something, right? And Here's the thing about that. It's a good place to be in to get to God. And that might sound weird. Why am I saying being in the wilderness is a good place to be in to get to God? Because being in the wilderness creates humility. Yeah, it creates humility. And when you're, when you're humble, you fall on your face different. You fall on your face different. You cry out different. You know, David had somebody on his heels, okay? In real life, Saul was coming for him, okay? And he needed something, and that something was God, right? And so when you're in the wilderness, when you are in that place where you don't have anything, you cry out different to God and he comes running. He comes running when we humble ourselves and submit ourselves unto him and we seek him. And he comes different when you are seeking him just for him or if you're seeking him for what he can give to you. It's a difference. It's a difference. Yeah. And the other thing is when we're in the wilderness, it's a good place for God to begin to prune some things up off of us. Get that old up off. And that pruning creates an environment where fruit can be produced, developed, and grow. Okay? And so we want to, when we're in that wilderness state, not that we want to stay there because we don't. I'm not suggesting that. But when we are there, we want to humble ourselves. Seek God earnestly just for him and then allow him to start cutting and pruning some things up off of us to de develop and to create in us some new things. All right, listen, it's 15 minutes. She gotta go. Um, be blessed or whatever. And to the audience that God has for me, I love you. And I want to see us all grow. 2021 is a year of growth for me. And I want to see it be a year of growth for you. Listen, God finna do something. Listen, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. One more thing. I'm not talking about this yet because I ain't studied it. And I don't really know what the Holy Spirit means by what he said to me. But he said, I'm taking you places your scars can't go. Now, this perplexed me because I thought my scars were the evidence of my testimony. And so I thought I wanted my scars with me 
when I went wherever God was taking me. But the Holy Spirit said, I'm taking you places your scars can't go. So I got to figure out why, <laughs> why my scars can't go. Um, but when I do, I'm going to do a get ready with God and I'm going to wear a hoodie that says heal because my girl has a clothing line um, that from her business and it, and her, her hoodie say healed and it's the appropriate hoodie to wear for that get ready with God. So check me out. All right. Love y'all. Peace and blessings. Bye.